Hey guys, this is Eskimo Poodle, and we are here to start a new Let's Play series, Last Dream on the PC. Uh, you're asking, what the heck is Last Dream? Um, as far as uh, as far as I can tell, it is a indie RPG in the Super Nintendo style that was made by a team of roughly 50 people, uh, maybe a little less, uh, in the RPG Maker series of games. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, so why the heck are you playing this? RPG Maker game. Uh, apparently, it's done extremely well. Uh, it's got really good reviews on Steam from what I've seen here, and it is supposedly a callback to what is it? Uh, old Super Nintendo RPGs, but with a lot of good stuff added to it. So I'm going to give it a shot. If we like it, then there is also a sequel to it. Um, I did get this game in a bundle from fanatical.com, I think it's .com, uh, which is basically a website where you get bundles of uh, PC games for cheap, like this game, the sequel, and I think like five other RPGs came out, it was like a, a bundle for like two and a half bucks or something like that, so a really good deal, assuming the games are actually good, which they probably are, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and give it a shot, and... Well, let's see if we like it. I mean, heck, we liked, uh, what, Cthulhu Saves the World and Breath of Death 7. So, this is probably going to be pretty good. From what I've read, it's uh, supposedly a 30 to 40-hour 30, 30 to 40 game. Lots of side quests that people said there should be lots of fun there. Um, let's go ahead and get started. I don't think there's a hard mode, is there? No? I, already did all this, I already did all the setting stuff, so I'm not too worried about that. Actually, can I see if... Let me see. Gamepad mapping. Can I do... There you go. Let's do that. Let's do that. 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 So there we go. Okay. No. That's not quite what I was trying to do there. Shoot. Um... Okay, that did not work out. Let's do that. Okay. Uh, crap. Start. That's not working out here. I think I may have messed something up here. Ah, shoot. Hang on, let me try to fix this. Alrighty, took care of that. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and get started here on the new game here, and let's see how it works. Character selection. Press dash button to see character description. Um, okay, I guess on my controller, it's the X button. Uh, the knight is a physical damage dealer and absorber with high attack and defense. His natural stats are enhanced by his ability to wear heavy armor and use shields. The knight's core attributes are HP, attack, defense, and I'm guessing magic defense. Build dependent attributes are MP, pre, accuracy, and I'm guessing crit. Uh, I'm not sure what pre is. Less useful attributes attributes include intellect and agility. A knight will likely attack from the front row so he can take damage that would otherwise kill weaker classes such as mages for weapons. The knight can use swords, axes, spears, and knives. Because, because of his tremendous physical assets, the knight lacks any special ability, such as the hunter's ability to tame giant moas, or the engineer's ability to tunnel. Okay, as far as I can tell, you choose uh, four characters to be your party here. Uh, kind of like, um, or four classes to be your party. Kind of like the first Final Fantasy game. So let's go ahead and look at all these real fast here. Uh, no, I want to actually look at this here. The monk is a master of bare-fisted fighting. He has a natural resistance to status effects and does not need, nor can he carry. Most weapons or armor making him a very inexpensive character. I've never really liked that. I mean, like, yeah, monks are powerful and you don't need to equip them like that, but I like equipping stuff, so I'm probably not going to use him, but we'll see. The monk's core attributes are HP attack, defense, magic defense, accuracy. Build-dependent attributes are pre and crit. Less useful attributes include MP, intellect, and agility. More information. Although he's initially weaker than the knight, he can do more damage at higher levels because of his special skill, Fists of Fury, which allow him to attack an enemy multiple times. Another special skill, Cleanse, available to the monk after the class upgrade to Black Belt. Oh, they do have a 
Oh, I, I guess they are following pretty specifically the Final Fantasy one here. Like, I didn't know that they were actually going to have a upgrade system. Like, I know there's a lot of side quests. I know you chose four party members um, and stuff like that, but I'm not. I didn't know about the upgrade here. And also, I guess they have like ways to specialize your characters further through various. Uh, I don't know if it's like a talent tree or something like that, but we'll see. Uh, he generally only... Oh, no. Another special skill cleanse available to the monk after the class upgrade of Black Belt makes him completely completely immune to status effects. He generally only has moderate defense, but can be built to have very high max HP. The thief is a key to a strong economy. His true strengths lie in his ability to steal from enemies and pick locks in town without arousing suspicion of the city guards. Thief's core attributes are HP, MP defense, magic defense, accuracy, pre, and agility. Crit is a build dependent attribute, and intellect is less useful for him. Before the class upgrade, the only weapons that the thief can equip are knives and whips. However, he can equip heavier armor, allowing his defense to be higher than the engineer or mages. After the class upgrade, the thief becomes a ninja who can equip swords, spears, and shields. The ninja's late game physical defense is behind only the defense of the Dark Knight and Sage. His base parameters build at moderate cost, but he can increase his agility and, okay, preemption, very quickly making him important for running from enemies or getting preemptive strikes on enemies. Okay. The hunter's strengths, unlike most other classes, lie outside the battlefield in moa taming and scanning. The hunter is a mediocre warrior who can only use bows, but she is still able to wear heavier armor. The hunter's core attributes are HP attack, defense, medic defense, preemptive, and agility, build dependent attributes are MP, accuracy, and crit. Less useful attributes include intellect. Therefore, she is a good choice for the front or middle row in battle. The hunter's upgraded class, the Beastmaster, does not gain access to any additional weapons or armor. The hunter's real value lies in his abil her ability to scan, thus enhancing the damage output of the rest of your party. The hunter's other primary trait is the ability to tame giant boas, thus allowing faster and safer travel on the world map. Okay. Grey Mage. I'm guessing you're kind of like a Red Mage. The Grey Mage is a jack of all trades. He's the only character capable of using both the white and black arts. He is also an above average warrior in the early game. The Grey Mage's core, build dependent, and less useful attributes are dependent on his style of build. Knight, Black Mage, or Blended Knight Mage. See the Knight and Black Mage descriptions for their attributes. He can wear heavy armor and use swords, spears, and knives. In addition, he is the only class other than the Knight that can initially equip a shield. He is able to learn both white and black spells, however, he cannot learn the highest spells, 7th and 8th tier, in either of the arts. Okay. The White Mage is the best tiller in the game. She excels in the recovery, the art of recovery by both restoring HP and curing adverse status effects. The White Mage's core attributes are HP, MP, Intellect, Defense, and Magic Defense. Preemptive is a build-dependent attribute. Less useful att attributes include Attack, Agility, Accuracy, and Crit. Her white arts are the Bane of the Undead. She can single-handedly destroy entire groups of undead enemies with her holy spells. The only weapons she is able to wield are stabs and knives. She can only equip white armor, such as robes and hats. This makes her physical attack and defense quite low. She should likely stay in the back row in battle. Besides the Sage, the Grey Mage after the class upgrade, the White Mage is the only character that can learn to resurrect characters outside of towns. Okay. The Black Mage is a master of destroying large groups of enemies with his potent black arts. His damage output can surpass even the Knight and Monk, but his spell-based damage is not unlimited like their physical attacks. The Black Mage's core attributes, HP, MP, Intellect, Defense, Magic Defense, Spell-Dependent Attributes, Preemptive Crit, Less Useful, Attack, Agility, Accuracy. I would assume Agility would be useful for everybody since you go faster, but whatever. His weakness is his limited amount of mana points, which constrains him to have to pick and choose which enemies he wants to annihilate. He can only wield staffs and knives to wear light armor such as robes and hats. This makes his physical attack and defense quite weak. Therefore, he should remain in the back row during battle. Despite his weak physical defense, he can be built to have very high magical defense, which will protect him from enemy magic. The Black Mage is the only character capable of learning the Warp Spell, which allows the party to leave dungeons in the same way as the Warp Stone. And Engineer. The Engineer is a utility character with a variety of unique abilities that make him quite useful. His abilities and notes are... His ability to tunnel to increase the effectiveness of items and bombs, and to increase the experience gained during battle. The engineer's core attributes are HP, MP, intellect, defense, and magic defense. Built dependent attributes are preemptiveness, which I'm going to have to remember, accuracy, and crit. 
Less useful attributes include attack and agility. He can only wield bows, knives, and whips, and wear light armor such as robes and hats. He is therefore an average attacker with below average defense. Throughout Terra, there are a myriad of tunnels that may or may not provide shortcuts or paths to hidden treasure through dungeons or on the world map. Only the engineer has the expertise and ability to navigate these dangerous tunnels once he has learned the tunneling skill. Some tunnels are so treacherous that they require the engineer to learn advanced tunneling. Additionally, he can double the effectiveness, uh, effectiveness of certain items and bombs by learning particular skills, item boost and grenadier, respectively. Okay, so we gotta choose four people here. Um, the monk is probably good due to the fact that he has the whole, uh, what is it, no armor stuff, so like they said, he's cheap. But like I said, I like having armor and stuff. Um, I'm tempted to go with Thief since they'll upgrade into a ninja. So let's do that. Uh, let's call you... Uh, let's call you... Stabs. Actually, screw it. Stabbers. You know, like Scabbers from Harry Potter the Rat, except he's Stabbers. Awesome. Okay, so a thief. I want to. I want to try out the hunter here. I think I'm going to go for a reasonably safe party of thief, engineer, and then the the two mages. Um, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work out, but we'll f we'll figure it out. So let's do it. Uh, engineer, let's go ahead and call you Sid. Why not? I mean, I know you're not technically Sid from Final Fantasy, but he's an engineer for the most part, or a ship mechanic, or something with uh, wrenches and stuff. So that works out pretty good, I think. White Mage. Let's call you... Um, let's see... I think I got it. Ivory. And you shall be... Ebony. Perfect. Alright, let's get started. Would you like to change the default costumes to your party members? Actually, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Yellow. I think I like the, the gray and white on you, so that's awesome right there. Okay. You, let's go with... That's a Santa Claus looking outfit right there. I think I like the red and black on you. You. I kind of like the, the snowy look there. But for you, I think I'm just going to stick with the classic because, well, it works out fine. Uh, let's see. The black mage. I like that one right there. You can't see anything except for his eyes. I love it. Please customize your gaming experience through the following options. You can change these options at any point during the game. Uh, let's see, encounter rate. Let's go with... Let's go with standard for right now. And then if I need to grind off screen, uh, I'll just do that every once in a while. Um, let's start with just regular hard here. And then if it's too easy, we'll switch it up to very hard and legendary. Because I don't know how tough this game's going to be, but we'll figure it out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put save anywhere. Just for the fact that, well, it makes my... It makes my work here a little easier here. Cutscenes, of course. Of course I want to watch the intro. What are you talking about? Hey kids, I'll be right back. I'm going to collect some more firewood. See if you can count back from 60, kitty, and then we'll make s'mores.
Better head back. Looks like a sudden storm has arisen. I don't, I don't understand. I don't remember any of this. What is this? I don't understand. Help! Could it be? Where are you? Please, where are you? I know where I am. Where do you think are you? What? Just move back to short. Help! Please help me. The water burns my throat. My only regret is leaving my kid's father was ah. He still breathes. Ugh, my head. I think he's gone. There's someone there. Help me, please. You're lucky to be alive. I need to get you back to Oakwood. Can you stand? I think so. I need to rest. How much further is it to this town? Oakwood, you said. We're getting close now. It's only another five miles. Only another five miles? Alright, I guess I can make it that far. Yes, let's keep moving. These woods can be dangerous. What the hell is that? I don't know. Let's get out of here. It's almost morning. We're almost there. What the hell? Two suns? Where am I? Okay, I've heard a lot of fantasies with two moons, and that makes sense. Because, uh, well, they're orbiting the planet or whatever. But, I don't know how two suns would make any sense at all, because they'd have to be... Still pretty far apart for them to not be, you know, colliding towards each other toward uh, due to the gravity of the two. Um... And, you know, not just baking all the planets in their orbits. So I don't know how two suns would actually work out pretty well. Calm down. I know it's confusing, but I don't believe you're ready to hear the truth yet. Let's just get back to town. Calm down? You've got to be kidding me. As I see it, you don't have much choice but to trust me. Fine. Let's move. And so Stevers arrives in Oakwood. Our story starts a year after that fateful day. In the previous year, Stevers has befriended three locals who help in weapons training and beast hunting in the sewer and around town. Stevers still has little idea where he is, and Dante refuses to reveal what, reveal what information he seems to have. The journey is started by what appears to be a small event, the kidnapping of Dante's daughter. And so the four reluctant warriors, Stevers and the three locals, start their journey not knowing what awaits them. Play through a short tutorial? Sure, but why not? Yeah, as far as I can tell, the story for this is uh, the main character gets transported to this world somehow, and he's got to figure out a way to get back home, but, you know, stuff happens. Welcome to Terror. In this tutorial, I'll explain everything you need to know to start your quest. Nearly all game settings are controlled via the settings menu. All the settings are saved when you exit. It will automatically be reapplied when you continue playing, obviously. Uh, start by learning to configure the in-game menus. Okay, we don't need this. Let's get rid of this real fast. Uh, auto dash, fa fast forward. Dash and fast forward options can be toggled to require the button to be held or whether it be automatically on at all times. Furthermore, you can also change the fast forward speed. To aid in your journey, you can quickly open the map menu, but though through holding, cancel for approximately one second while on the world map. I think that's enough about screen resolution, blah, blah, blah. Show up your basic movement skills by moving to the location of the blue diamond, green X, red circle I have created. Okay. 
Oh, we're going pretty fast. You know, you can move very quickly by dashing, hold down, dashing your keyboard or gamepad. Okay, I've actually got that just, uh... Uh, what is it, um... On default there. So your dashing skills by moving from the red circle to the blue diamond in less than three seconds. I got it. Blah, 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 movement. Another important control is cancel with map, map to X on your keyboard by default. In addition, you can open the main menu with menu. Finally, you can quickly switch between characters by using page up and page down to move left and right respectively between characters. You can remap your controls at any point by accessing settings menu. Okay, good stuff. And there was a typo, typo it said mu instead of menu, but whatever. Uh, let's see. There's one thing I want to do here, actually. Let's see, dash key. Where is the dash key? X? I don't really care about that. Uh, I want to change these to... Nope. Ah, damn it. It's not letting me. Okay, you know what? Uh, why aren't you letting me do this? There we go. Ah, uh, well, let me do it. Okay, never mind. I was trying to put it to uh, the triggers because I prefer those on. I prefer those to the shoulder buttons, but okay, if it's not going to work, it's not going to work. Okay. All right, buddy, what else you got there? Uh, okay, blah blah blah. Okay, that's everything there. Might as well do this quick tutorial just in case. Uh, that little screen tear is... Let me, let me try this here. Uh... Let's turn that off right there. No, that's still, that's still doing that. I guess we're just gonna have to deal with it a little bit. Okay, tough. Okay, basics and movement, exciting. Need to be well stocked to survive in your journeys. Treasures bound in the towns and dungeons that you'll visit. Create a treasure chest for you, open it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not really digging that uh, screen tear there at all. But then if I go to non full screen. You know what? I'll worry about that later. Proud owner of five shiny gold coins. The treasure chest was unprotected, as is the case with all chests chests found in dungeons. In towns, it's a very different story. Townspeople often hide their valuables in a locked chest, and therefore you will have to pick the lock on each chest to access the contents. <coughs> Excuse me. If you have a thief in your party, he will be able to pick the lock without ever arousing suspicion. However, without the thief, your chance to be caught by the city guards will increase as you pick more chests. Without a thief, your chance to get caught by a city guard starts at 1%, and increases by 1% for each chest you open in town. So keep in mind that your chance to get caught is shared across all towns. Therefore, if you open 5 chests in Oakwood, then if you try to open a chest in another town, your chance to be caught will be 6%. Chance to be caught is known as your wanted level, and can be reset for a price at the Thieves Guild hidden somewhere on Terra. Create another chest for you, this one is locked as any chest in town will be, please open it. Tempted to pick the lock. And picked. And a potion. Awesome. Very good. You'll notice that a text box display displayed the text attempting to pick the lock. This will appear each time you open a chest in town. Remember, if you have a thief in your party, you will never arouse, arouse the suspicions of the city guards and will always be safe. Without a thief, you run the risk of having to fight the city guards each with each chest that you open. Okay. Cool. You've learned about acquiring treasures, but you can't use the items you gain from treasure chests without understanding how to use them through the menu. I menu. Okay, that should be easy enough. And I like how it shows experience as a percentage right there. That's pretty nice. In game menu, upper left menu options, items. Okay, easy enough. Equipment. Okay, this seems like easy enough. Skills. You can learn the skills with acquired skill points as well as view and use on skills. Lastly, you can equip skills to skill slots that you can use them in battle. Okay. Fourth option is level up. Here you can assign the ability points that your characters earn when they level up. Okay. Unlike many games that have predefined parameter increases for each character upon level up, 
Characters in the last stream will gain a preset amount of AP at each level up. That's nice. Uh, you can freely distribute this AP between various parameters. Okay, so you can like choose your own stats. Okay. Bestiary, that sounds pretty nice. A hunter with a scan ability allows you to see the precise enemy parameters after scanning an enemy. Battle macros, this option allows you to set a macro or predefined collection of commands that you can be issued to all your characters through a single command. For example, if you wish for all your characters to do a regular physical attack, you can set such a macro inside the Battle Macros menu option and select it while in battle to save time. Here you can collections, here you can see data on treasures collected, equipment, sy equipment synthesized, fish caught, puzzles completed, buried treasures, all sorts of other good stuff. Achievements, okay, that sounds easy enough. Option is rows. Choose the rows in which your characters stand during battles. The row in which a character stands affects the probability of that character being targeted by enemies, with the front rows being targeted more often. Okay, cool. More menu options. Game options. Okay, easy enough. Party. Remove characters from your party if you want an additional challenge. Not really going to try that too much, but we'll see. Settings again. Tutorial. Okay. Cutscenes. We can rewatch them all. Okay, very nice. Maps. Sleeping bags, tents, and cottages can be used via the camp menu option while on the world map to save and partially restore your HP and MP. Camping only works on the world map. Okay, cool. I hope that brief synopsis of the main menu is helpful. You can now proceed to the next area to continue the tutorial. Apparently, this tutorial is a little. Uh, it looks like it looks like the. Um, the screen tear really only happens when you actually move between... No, it actually works. Never mind, it works. Or it's there, I'm sorry. I, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but if you do, well, oh well. By the way, when you spend skill points to acquire passive skills, you don't need to equip them. Now that you have had a brief summary of all the main menu options, you will have the option to explore the full tutorial menu. Uh, sure. Let's just look at anything we might need here. I'm not going to go over everything, but I do want to look at some of the other stuff here. Hang on, I got sneeze. Alright, New Game Plus and Reborn. When you begin the game, you are presented with three options. New Game, Low Game, Quick Game. After you have been in the last stream, you'll have two, uh, two new Title screen options New Game Plus and Reborn. New Game Plus begins a new game with all achievements saved, but all items, equipments, and level ups are erased. This feature allows you to acquire all the achievements to the last stream through multiple playthroughs. Reborn erases all achievements to level ups and keeps your equipment and items. Oh, so you can basically choose. Okay, very nice. Both options allow you to choose a new party in the subsequent new game. If you have multiple save files in which you have completed the game, then the New Game Plus or Reborn game type will be continued from the save file, which is first among the 20 save files. Reorder your save files if you wish to change from which save you begin a new game plus or reborn game. Okay. Um, oh, this is just telling the same stuff as character creation, I guess. The Abyss. Once you have acquired the ship, you can sail freely around Terra. However, many of the locations will require you to become much stronger before you can safely, safely run. When you have acquired Kali's Medallion, you can enter the Abyss. The Abyss is the largest and deadliest of dungeons on Terra. The peculiar property of the Abyss is the distortion field that weakens your characters upon entrance. The distortion field also means that you must leave all the items and equipment that you have acquired outside the Abyss because they would otherwise disintegrate. Inside the Abyss, your party will start itemless and at level 1, except for the most basic set of equipment. There are a variety of special objects and treasures in the Abyss. Red treasures contain items such as weapons, armor, and consumable items. Items from red chests can only be used inside the Abyss and will disintegrate upon exit. Green treasures contain special weapons, armor, and accessories that are for the most part unique to the Abyss. Treasures are the only ones which can be taken outside the Abyss. Black hexagrams are regeneration points that can be used three times whenever they are found and are full recover. Red hexagrams found every fifth floor are warp points. If you leave the Abyss, you'll have to restart from the beginning at level 1. The Abyss says depths uncharted and no one knows what awaits at the bottom, however the treasures are likely invaluable. Okay, so it's basically like a, a little bonus dungeon, but with a nice little twist on it. Okay, cool. Buried treasure. Treasures abound on Terra, not only in towns and dungeons, but buried beneath the ground. Early in the game, you can acquire the drill, which allows you to dig on the world map for buried treasures. 
the terra is vast and it would take forever to dig everywhere. Therefore, you'll have to find treasure maps that pinpoint the location of buried treasures. With the treasure map in hand, you can go to the exact location of buried treasures, press action and dig. If you follow the directions correctly, you'll find the treasure. Later in the game, you can purchase a sonar. This device can locate deeply buried treasure without a treasure map. Once you have acquired the sonar, you can use it on the world map by pressing dash. This will send out a sonar pulse that can detect deeply buried treasure. If any treasures are on the screen, they will be indicated with the blinking light. Once you have located a treasure with sonar, go to that location, blah blah blah. Fishing! The seas and oceans of Terra are rich with a variety of aquatic life, and if you begin the game, you can acquire the old fishing pole from the long-haired fisherman near the pond at the center of Oakwood. Once you have the old fishing pole, you can head to the nearest fishing dock to start fishing. At the dock, there is always a local fisherman who is willing to sell fishing bait for a price. Approach the fisherman. Each fisherman has a variety of baits for sale. Early in the game, only certain baits are available. Here, only junk bait, high-quality veggie bait, and worm bait are available. Later, more baits will become available. After purchasing some bait, appro a bait, approach it. Approach the end of the dock to begin fishing. You'll be prompted to begin fishing, and then we'll have the opportunity to choose which fishing pole to use. At the beginning of the game, only the old fishing pole is available. Later in the game, better fishing poles are available through synthesis. Each of these fishing pole rod recipes require high-level fish as ingredients. Highest level fishing pole, the master rod. It requires special bait that can only be synthesized in order to fish. Next, you'll be prompted to choose which bait you would like to use. Only junk bait is shown. Because that is the only one in the player's inventory. Choke bait is the cheapest and worst bait available. The high quality veggie bait is slightly better and the board bait is better yet. The best two baits are magic and super. When using junk bait with the old fishing rod, one of the four lowest levels of fish can be caught. There's a 50% chance to catch the lowest level fish, goldfish, and a 25% chance to catch the second level, second lowest level fish, anchovy. Furthermore, there's a 10% chance to caught catch the third lowest level fish, catfish, and a 5% chance to catch the fourth lowest level fish, albacore, and 10% chance to catch nothing at all, the bites. Each level of bait leaves the percentage is the same, but increases the highest level fish by one level. For example, the old fishing rod with H high quality veggie bait can catch the second, fifth level fish. The improvement for each tier of fishing pole is much larger. The second tier fishing pole, the thin fishing pole, with junk bait can catch the sixth through ninth fish, increasing the maximum level of fish by five. After choosing a pole and bait, you'll cast your line and try to catch a fish. After after a few seconds, you will catch a fish or get no bite. In this case, the goldfish was caught. All saltwater fish increase either HP or MP to either a single player or the entire party. See the description window in the item menu for an individual fish to see its properties. Later in the game, better fishing rods will allow you to catch other types of fish, such as ice water, fresh water, and high level fish that have different effects from saltwater fish. So they have like little stat options, okay. To allow either fish easier fishing, after you catch a fish or get no bites, you'll have the option to use the same fishing pole and bait. The section option allows you to fish again, but choose a different pole and or bait. Okay. Fishing may provide minimal results at the beginning of the game, but a master fisherman can catch the giants of the sea, which have healing properties incomparable to any other items available. Okay. Uh, let's see, abilities. Oh, this just gives you a... Primary skill for monk is a fist of fury. At level 13, the monk can learn the skill, which allows him to attack multiple times with his regular attack. Causes the monk's number of attacks to be a function of his accuracy. For every 50 points of accuracy, the monk's attacks will increase by 1 up to a limit of 7 hits. With this skill, the monk can far outpace the nice damage output in the late game. Level 10, the black mage can learn the warp ability, from function, which functions exactly the same as warp stones. Both will allow your party to leave most dungeons and return to the entrance. Warp is just allowed in a few dungeons where special fields prevent it from being used. Uh, this is just a revive, I'm guessing. Level 10 revive. Life is made more valuable because there is no purchasable item that could resurrect party members. Oh, okay, so there's no like Phoenix Towns or anything like that. Life will resurrect party members with a small percentage of the maximum HP. Later in the game, Priestess can learn Life 2, which allows full HP. Okay. Steal. Many enemies have items that can be stolen in battle, and only the thief can steal them. Steal is the base skill of the thief that can be learned at level 1. Thief's steal ability is dependent on his agility. Each enemy stealable item has the base probability to steal, which is multiplied by the ratio of the thief's agility to that of the enemy. Many enemies have multiple items which can be stolen, some with a relatively high base probability to steal, and others that are rare do not have a low base probability to steal. 
Only with the Hunter's Scan ability can you see all the items that can be stolen from a given enemy. On Terra, both dungeons and on the world map, there are tunnels that can be used as shortcuts. These tunnels are incredibly dangerous, only na navigated safely by the engineer. Tunneling is a base skill of the engineer that can be learned at level 1. Once the engineer has learned tunneling, you can be passed through tunnels to a tunnel. Approach the tunnel end and press the action button. If you have an engineer alive in your party that has learned tunneling, you'll be prompted to tunnel. Later in the game, there are more dangerous tunnels that require advanced tunneling to them. safely navigate. Mobile taming. The ability to tame Giant Moes is perhaps the most important ability. At level 4, she can learn Beast Tamer, which allows Giant Moes to be tamed in mobile forests. A tamed Giant Moe can be ridden and will not only increase your party's speed on the world map, but also increase the encounter rate. Oh, decrease the encounter rate. Riding a Giant Moe decreases the encounter rate by a factor of 4 in forests and 2 on flatlands. Early in the game, a Moe whistle can be tamed, which will allow you to call your Giant Moe to your location if you have tamed one on that continent. At level 18, the hunter can learn the skill of Moa Master, which eliminates random encounters while riding a giant Moa. Oh, so it's just basically encounter less or what. Then again, you have that uh, option in the options that say, hey, do you want a lower encounter rate or not? So that doesn't seem too terribly helpful. I mean, it's slightly faster, it seems like. Like faster walking around and less encounters, but yeah, I think I'll live. Scan, which I didn't get. Hunter Scan ability is a base skill that can be learned at level 1. It can be used in battle and will allow you to view all pertinent statistics for the targeted enemy. In battle, you can view the scan data by pressing dash. Outside of battle, you can view all scan data in the bestiary menu. Scan data includes enemy parameters, elemental weaknesses, item drops, and items that can be stolen. The hunter can learn better scan abilities at higher levels that add status boosts to the party when scanning an enemy. That's actually not too shabby right there. In towns across Terra, people lock their valuables away. Okay, we've already read that. Okay. And finally, synthesis, and then we'll be done here. Throughout your journey on Terra, you'll become come, come upon items known as recipes. These items will allow you to take a certain combination of items and synthesize a new item. Item shown on the screen is a recipe for mid potion, which allows you to synthesize mid potions. The first step in the synthesis process is to check the required ingredients. The ingredients can be checked in two different ways. First, if you access the item menu and go to the special category, you can see all the recipes you have collected. If you select the recipe of interest, you can see the ingredients in the description window at the top of the screen. For example, mid potion requires a potion and two goblin scales. Second, second option is available only at the Synthesis Shop, which are available only in select towns. So at the Synthesis Shop, you can see a list of all the recipes you collected in the bottom left-hand window. In the bottom right-hand corner, you can see the required ingredients for that particular recipe. In addition, it will tell you the number of each ingredient that you currently possess. Lastly, this window also tells you the Synthesizer's fee for creating that item. To gain additional information about a particular synthesized item, press Dash. This function is exactly the same as the item menu, item shop, or in battle. Finally, you can compare a synthesizable equipment to your current equipment by pressing right while in the synthesizable items list. Press left return to view the ingredients. Okay, there we go. Let me see if this exits the tutorial here. Take care of your journey, wherever it may lead you. Alright. Well, we got a thousand gold to start. Okay, so we didn't actually get a whole lot done this episode, just mainly tutorial stuff. The next episode, we will go ahead and, well, get started on our journey. Uh, probably check out the battles and then go to town and see what we can do. So guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good night.